So seasonally, uh, we're at the Christmas piece. What would be some of your top ideas for what people should be doing for Christmas time? Right. What would be like for the holiday season? What would be some tips for what would be the red shoes they need to get out and the purple cows they need to bring in? Okay. So first of all, let's look how much you got invested in the Christmas inventory. Is it $2,000? Okay. If it's $2,000 in wholesale, and if you don't sell any, what will happen? Don't run scared and go on sale. Try to get what you can from it, because once you put things on sale, everybody sits back and says, when's your next sale? Okay, so so you're invested $10,000 in Christmas, we got to talk. Understand there are two week, two seasons to Christmas. Okay, November and the first one or two weeks of December is the first season. That's when people buy the outside decorations. They buy the box cards. They buy bigger gifts. They buy the lights. And as we get closer to Christmas, they buy the, the trimmer tree. If you got that stuff, don't put it on sale. This is when they're going to buy it. If you have to put something on sale, 10 days before Christmas, put your put your trimmer tree on sale, put your outside stuff on sale, because most of that's been bought. But So now you have a sale atmosphere. Put your wrap, your bows, your candy, your last minute gifts are at full retail. So understand there's two seasons. And merchandise that way. Merchandise your store twice to reflect the peak. So of the tips that you provide in your course to pharmacies, um, what would you say pharmacies have been, have commented and come back and said, I, I did X from your class and I saw more profit. I saw, you know, they, they saw a difference. They saw the change. Windows, signs, probably the two things. Signs being like at the street? Well, oh, any kind of sign. But inside the store, there are three types of sales, impulse, companion, and plant. Our wonderful pharmacists make a living on planned sales. We're not, we're not into merchandising that much, right? So signage is your silent salesperson. So promote things with signage because they don't have a bad day. And if you're creative, they're going to get you those extra sales. So once I get folks to start using signage to sell product. Now, I'll show you something. I don't know if you can see it. This is a sign holder. Okay, it's magnetic. You got to get one of these. Whether you get the magnetic one or one that just sits on and the top rail of the fixture. And I want you to have one for every other four foot section on the gondola. And I want you to sell something that people don't even think about. Now this one says, don't you wish you could sleep like this at home? Ask our pharmacist if melatonin is right for you. Now, this could have a picture of a person who's very concerned, holding their head, holding their head like this, and holding a bottle of CBD with their other hand. And the picture could say, concerned whether you should be taking CBD? Ask our pharmacist if it's a right move for you. There's a pharmacy down the street doing 50000 a month in OTC. I bet that's more than 5% of their business. Is it independent? It's an independent. Yeah. It's compounder. All right. Okay. So are you when you say fifty thousand dollars a month in OTC, are you counting gifts, cards, yeah, candy? Everything. But but they DME, have DME. DME. I'm talking OTC in in your traditional that you buy from your primary wholesaler. I'm not talking DME. They have a huge business in um, replacement. They're doing kind of what Chris Cornelson's doing and stuff, but where they're doing, hey, you're on this drug, you should be on this drug. They have a very structured okay. Um, nutrient depletion program. Uh, they're selling lots of vitamins at 
fifty percent, hundred percent profit. Fifty percent margin, hundred yeah. percent profit. Yep. Yeah. So every store needs one at least one four foot shelf of our pharmacist recommends high end supplements. Yep. And here and here's a tip. Because there, someday you and I got we all have to talk about the myths that are stopping pharmacists from getting more business. And one of the myths is nobody has any money in my town. Or everybody buys that on the internet. And the other myth is I can't sell anything for over 20 bucks. Pharmaceutical grade supplements are going to sell for 30 bucks and up. I'm not asking you to be a salesperson. I'm asking you to be able to explain why this is $39 and the other one is $9.99. This is Jones. I'll tell you why one is $9.99 and one's $30.99. The $9.99 one makes your wallet feel better. And some people just want to tell, take a vitamin and tell their doctor, yes, I'm taking my vitamins. This one says it maintains your health. Would you rather not just maintain but maybe start feeling better? Now that you're taking those statin drugs, don't you want to take a good CoQ10? Mrs. Jones, here's a vitamin that's good for the wallet. Here's a vitamin that's good for you. It's going to cost you about a cup of co- the same price of a cup of coffee a day. Always break it down by dosage, and you're going to sell a whole lot more supplements. But you need one shelf minimum of all the biggies, CoQ10, the, the bone suppl- supplements for your heart. And a big sign that says our pharmacist recommends. And use these type of signs that says, feeling stressed? Ask us if our B12 is right for you. And move these signs around your store. And the beauty of it is, there's two sides. So it's a little self-promotion. If you want more tips, go to ncpa.org forward slash profit makers. And every two weeks, you'll get tips to your mailbox for free. We have over 2,000 people doing this every two weeks. So when you're talking 5% of your business, are you including these? Your your B12s, your your that type of supplements? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Like 5% of your business? Because that was, I mean, just hearing, okay, this is only 5% of my, hey, you should do this in 5% of your business. I'm like, eh, okay, maybe that's in the way. Maybe I just want to do more flu shots. Um, I do like what I heard you say about it's the decoration of your pharmacy. It's kind of sales, you know, having that stuff. If I, you know, as long as they don't go old, you know, there's, there's a strong piece of, of looking like, looking successful. Um, well, it's like you said, you got to start at the curb and you got to start at the curb and get your windows clean and not have stickers for every little thing and not just stickers, but it's like all of the handmade signs that no checks accepted and all of that stuff that could be at the cash register just to remind customers, Hey, we don't accept checks. I'm sorry. Um, it's cleaning up the front end and making things more attractive um, so that way they want to come into the store. 